All right, we're going to go ahead and check out the tube media for microbiology. First, we're going to start with litmus milk. Litmus milk is a nice purple color when uninoculated. The color of the tube ultimately is an indication of whether or not the organism is able to ferment lactose. If it can ferment lactose, it will change from the uninoculated purple to any one of a variety of colors. So the color is going to be an indication of how the organism was able to ferment the lactose. Uninoculated is purple color. If the tube turns blue, by comparison, that's fermentation of lactose with high pH. If it turns pink, that's an indication of lactose fermentation with moderate pH. And if it turns white, that's an indication that it is fermenting with very low pH, highly acidic conditions. The first thing you assess with litmus milk is whether or not your organism was able to ferment lactose. The second aspect of differential litmus milk is to determine whether the organism can digest casein. First thing you want to look for in digesting casein at the surface of the tube. If we tilt the surface of the tube, we're looking for a watery component where it's completely clear. If we have a watery component, that's an indication that the organism has completely digested the protein casein. However, when we tilt the tube, if we don't have a watery result, we tilt the tube and we look to see whether or not we have a curd. Is the tube liquid or solid? In this case, we have a solid component, a soft curd in the bottom of the tube, and a soft curd in the bottom of the tube is an indication that the organism was able to partially digest casein. All right, the next tube we're going to be looking at is phenol red mannitol. Phenol red mannitol is a nice red color to start with. There's a durum tube on the inside of there. We're looking to see whether the organism can ferment mannitol. If the organism is capable of fermenting mannitol, it will change to a yellow color. You will get a yellow result. Then we look at the durum tube to indicate whether or not the organism is or is not producing gas. If the organism is able to produce gas, you'll get a bubble filling the durum tube. Both of these are positive tubes for mannitol fermentation without gas and with gas where we see that bubble. Next tube we're going to be assessing is motility. This is SIM motility, S-I-M motility. It's a semi-solid when uninoculated. We use the needle to do a stab inoculation. And we ultimately are looking for, under the motility aspect, whether or not we can see a fuzzy line, fuzziness associated with the stab line. If we see the fuzziness, it is positive for motility. If we do not see a fuzziness associated with the stab line, if we just see a clean stab, that's an indication that the organism is negative for motility. The next, next thing we can assess in motility is the production of hydrogen sulfide using the sulfur. If there's a blackish precipitate or a blackish cast to the tube, that's an indication that the organism can produce hydrogen sulfide. It would be positive for hydrogen sulfide. And then the third thing we do in assessing SIM is the I, or the indole component. We add COVAX reagent, which is the indole chemical, and we look for a reddish ring at the surface. If we get a reddish result at the top, after adding COVAX solution, that's an indication that our organism is positive for tryptophanase. Tryptophanase is the enzyme that breaks down indole.